Hello everyone. Today's topic is doctrine of ultravirus. The term ultravirus consists of two Latin words, ultra and virus. Ultra means beyond and virus means powers. Thus, ultravirus means doing an act beyond the powers. A company has powers to do acts or make contracts permitted expressly or impliedly by its memorandum of association. The company cannot go beyond the objects or scope of the memorandum of association. A contract which is ultra-virus the company, that is beyond company's power, is null and void and is not binding on the company. Such acts cannot be ratified even by the consent of all the members of the company. In case any ultra-virus act has been done or is about to be done, any member of the company can obtain an injunction from the court. Injunction from the court means restraining order from the court. The directors of the company are also personally liable to the third party if they exceed their authority by doing ultra-virus acts. Let me share a case law with you as an example. Ashbury Railway Carriage and Iron Company Limited versus Ritchie. It was in the year 1875. The doctrine of ultra-virus was first stated by the House of Lords in Ashbury Railway Carriage and Iron Company Limited versus Ritchie. Let us study the fact of the case. The memorandum of association of a company defined its objects as to make and sell or to lend on hire railway carriages and wagons and to carry on the business of mechanical engineers and general contractors. This was the object of the company which was written in the object clause of the memorandum. The company entered into a contract with another firm of railway contractors to finance the construction of railway line in Belgium. Later on, the company repudiated the contract as an ultra-virus. Repudiated means cancelled the contract. The other party brought a legal action against the company for damages for breach of contract. The other party contended in the court that the contract was within the power of the company. It was well within the words general contractors as used in the object clause of the company. The company defended the action on the ground of ultra-virus. The court held that the contract was ultra-virus the company and therefore null and void and could not be validated even by the unanimous consent of all the shareholders. This video gave you a brief explanation of the doctrine of ultra-virus. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and listening.